today what 40 minutes with a former professional boxer taught me about leadership and provided my wife is not tuning in I'm gonna share how easy it is for you to have your customers spend money when you don't have to open your wallet hey welcome to JT in the raw show 71 and I'm coming to you live from the Qantas lounge here in LAX. I'm on my way home from uh, from Boston and this is an unusual time for JT and the Raw. It's four o'clock in the afternoon I think in Sydney. It's kind of midnight in uh, New York or Boston and it's, it's uh, what is it now, um, nine o'clock here in LA. So we're about eight hours later than we normally are. Um, so uh, I think that's the question of the day. Should JT and the Raw be eight o'clock in the morning or four o'clock in the afternoon? Um, I want to hear from you guys. Eight or four? Yeah, I know. Debs, JT and the Roar at four. Hmm. Yeah, it's bizarre. Uh, I like eight o'clock in the morning. That's me. Um, and I just looked at myself in the camera and I look like shit. Um, that's probably because I was up this morning at uh, 5.30 Boston time, went and did a soul cycle class and have been pretty much going all day. Anyway, you don't want to hear about that. What you want to hear about is what's in the show. Yeah, Deb's on with you, vote 8 o'clock. Good one. So, yeah, that's quite, that's the question of the day, 8 or 4. Okay, so what are we talking about today? I'm going to talk about the leadership secrets. Um, keep it short, it's beer o'clock. <laughs> Scotty Gresham, I love it. Um, okay, so I'm going to talk about these, just some tips that I heard on leadership from George Foreman the third. It's got nothing to do with grilling food either. It's all about leadership, so I'm going to share with that with you. I've got a, uh, a couple of little ideas around um, making it really easy for our customers to buy from us and then a little bit of, on social media. So it's a Licorice All Shorts show but first off got a couple of shout outs. Got a big shout out to Matty Wright and the whole Nursa board. Um, that's the North England uh, Health Racket and Sports Association uh, who had their uh, like kind of reboot of conference uh, today in uh, in Boston and I kicked off the day at nine o'clock this morning talking about social media um, I feel really humbled to uh, to be able to speak at this conference because it is being rebuilt and uh, I, I just really appreciated the opportunity Maddie and the board that trusted me to uh, to launch the sh launch the conference for them so um, so thank you I really appreciate it to you guys um, also want to give a shout out to the team at Ursa um, I spent some time yesterday with Pam and then today, you know, with Nicole and Chris and Christina and Joe, um, there's a whole bunch of them that were around the conference as well and I really appreciate uh, the relationship that Active Management and also the Fitness Business Podcast has with Ursa. So thank you uh, for being open to a relationship between uh, us and, and you, you as an association. It's very much appreciated from uh, my side of things and my company. So, um, so thank you to Ursa, uh, I really appreciate it. I also want to give a shout out um, today to Eric. Eric is a brand new coaching client. We had our first coaching call this week and uh, mate, you did a great job coaching um, and listening and, and sharing how you feel. So well done and I'm looking forward to working with you a little bit more. Uh, what else? I think that's it, that'll do for shout outs. All right, let's talk George Foreman the third. So this guy, I um, uh, put a photo on of him on Facebook. If you haven't seen it, just put George in the comments below and I'll send you the photo. He's probably about three feet taller than me. Um, he's a giant of a man, I, I, quite quite large in height, but not in, in width or thickness. Um, very quiet, very humble. Um, and he has four locations for gyms in, uh, in Boston. And he's got a couple of licensed ones and he's looking to expand uh, nationally in the US but also internationally. And it was interesting talking to him because he was talking about, well, how do I scale my business to make sure that I'm giving quality service to our customers when I've got multiple locations? So he shared um, a, a number of points, but I got seven that I got out of his presentation and I just thought I'd share them with you. Um, and the first one is that uh, people attach themselves to the personality, not the product or the service. People attach themselves to the personality, not the product or the service. 
So he was saying that people actually come to the gyms um, and go go to restaurants uh, because of the people there. It's not because of any other reason. It's the personality of the people. Hmm. And then that flowed directly onto his second point. And his second point said this, that in his organisation, the owners identified very quickly that the core customer, the core customer for the owner was in fact the staff. So they invested more money, like more cash, more energy, and more resources directly into developing their team, more than anything else. And I thought that was a really interesting insight because a lot of times in business, we spend all our money on marketing, on improving our sales, um, we look at uh, technology, and what he was saying is if we can get our people right, that's what's the thing that's going to be the sticking point between our customer and the business. So he identified as the owner that their, his core customer was in fact the staff. Really good insight, that. Uh, point number three is if you want to build a community in your organisation, if you're trying to get a like to, um, you know, people to connect and, and build a real community within the organisation, then you need to have a, like if you want a community leader, then you need to teach that person how to build a community. What he was saying is a lot of assumptions are made with people these days in their leadership role that they, they just understand how to build community. And what we do know is that regardless of what business, you're in a restaurant, um, you're in a bar, uh, pubs, you're in gyms, you're in sporting clubs, the variety of different um, things, community is critical. Community is, is, again, the glue that keeps people coming back. And so what he was saying is that what's really important for us is that we, um, we teach people how to build a community. We don't assume that they know how to build a community. Again, good insight. I love this one, this is number four. This is a really easy one to remember. Um, and he said, ethos over policy. He said, your company ethos is more important than your company policy. But that was a really powerful, really cool point. Uh, point number five, when a customer says, that doesn't make sense, or I don't like that, and the response from the staff member is, oh, I know, or I agree. He said, your brand promise is then shot. It is completely gone. He said, so you've got to make sure your team are buying in and that they understand why we do things. They can't undermine the policies of the business by saying, oh, I don't know, I agree, when customers say that. Really good point. Uh, point number six. Um, when you have people in your organisation who are in exactly the right positions, they're doing the right things, right positions, right skill set, he said this, the playbook or the policy manual becomes thinner, there is less emails between staff and email trails are shorter. He also says that talk and communication face to face will increase and there'll be happiness in the workplace. Really interesting four points that he pulled out of that. When people are in the right position in your organisation doing the job that they can do best, the policy manuals shrink, there are less emails, there's more conversation between team members and there's greater happiness in the workplace. For me, that was a pure golden nugget and I loved it and I thought that was something that I would love to be able to take back to, to my clients and I will be. So if you like that one, give me a thumbs up. And number seven, the last one, how you handle conflict within your business as a leader will spread throughout the organization like wildfire. So what he was saying here was that as the leader of the business, how you handle the conflict, whether, it's, whether you handle it positively or negatively, whichever way you handle it, will be spread through the organization like wildfire. So you better handle it the right way. And he said, obviously, you want to handle it in a positive way. Really powerful. Like, I was just, um, I don't want to say this because it kind of, kind of sounds a bit tacky, but I guess, you, you know, when you're thinking about a boxer, are they really bright? Are they really articulate? He was articulate. 
He was um, he was on point. He was fantastic. Great speaker. Really impressed. I'm going to get him on the Fitness Business Podcast. Um, so keep your eyes uh, peeled for the for the podcast when we get him on. Okay. Now, what about this idea of spending money without opening your wallet? Uh, this week, I've you know while I've been in Boston, um, I've been travelling a lot on Uber. How good is Uber? No money. No money. It's so simple. Jump in, get out, no money. Then in the boutiques and the studios that I went into, because I had to book to do a class, they've now got my credit card. I can just go in there and if I want to buy a water, they just say, do you want that on your account? Yes, thanks. And they just put it straight on your account. It just makes buying easy. And so let me tell you, I'm going to confess something, and it's this. Final boarding announcement for British Airways. Um, see, I was at Soul Cycle, and a couple of months ago, I got on an email the Soul Cycle um, cycling shoes that they brought out, the limited edition, um, and they were pretty cool. They were smoking hot, but you couldn't order them and get them shipped into another country. So I walked straight into the Boston studio, and there they are, sitting on the um, in the retail wall. And I said, I went over to the guy and I said, do you have these in a size 41? I looked on them first, no price. So I went over to the front counter and I said, do you have these in a 41? He goes, yeah, I think so. Brings them out, try them on. Yep, perfect fit. I said, I'll take them. He said, okay, do you want them on your account? I said, yes, please. I had no idea of what the cost was, none. I didn't realise how much they cost until I got emailed a receipt. But the buying process was simple. So I think there are two components here. One is you've got to, you've got to love the brand. You've got to love the brand of Uber. You've got to love the brand of SoulCycle. You've got to love the brand of whatever your business is. Um, and you've got to want to be part of that tribe. And that makes the, the buying process simple. But also when we don't have to pull out our wallet. It's just, it's just a convenience purchase. You know, it's nothing to think about. Today, I finished this my my class at SoulCycle, and I forgot to take a spare shirt. So what do I do? I'll just get another shirt. But I wasn't the only one. There were about four people at half past six in the morning out of a class of thirty. There were four people who were buying retail at the front desk and having it added to their account. Are we missing opportunities in business to make purchasing the, an easier process for our customer? Just putting it out there. Okay, um, and my last point on this Licorice All Sorts show, where, uh, remember the question of the day is, is it 8 a.m. or four o'clock in the afternoon for JT and the Raw? 8 a.m. or four at the moment, we're erring on the side of eight. I'm with eight too, but I just wanted to put it out there for you guys. So this morning when I, I spoke at this conference, I, um, I spoke on social media. And so I was researching um, a whole bunch of stuff around Facebook and Instagram, um, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, what else, uh, YouTube and Snapchat. So I was just trying to get an understanding of all of these platforms and trying to work out different stuff. But I kept coming back to Facebook because it's the behemoth. And the reason why I kept coming back to Facebook is because I understand who my customer is. And the question I get asked a lot as a consultant in the fitness industry and, and even in small business is, what platform should I be on when it comes to social media? Like there's so many, I just named six of them I think, what one do I be on? The answer is really simple. You be on the platform that your customer is on. You don't go on the platform that you think you should be on or that your 12-year-old kid or 14-year-old kid tells you to be on or that you read in a magazine that tells you to be on. The person that will tell you what platform you need to be on and play on is your customer. So let me give you an example in my business, both the Fitness Business Podcast and Active Management. My core customer are business owners. Business owners in the fitness industry are generally on two platforms, email and also Facebook. They don't play on Instagram. But if I'm trying to attract a customer who is a personal trainer, 
then I am all over Instagram because personal trainers are all over Instagram. They're all over Instagram stories, but they're not on Facebook. They're not. The millennial personal trainer is not on Facebook. So if I'm putting messages out on Facebook that relate to personal trainers, it's not going to get seen. And in fact, it's going to do more harm than good for my business. And the reason why that is the case is because the quality of content won't engage with the gym owner. So this is where it gets tricky. When you understand who you're trying to talk to on Facebook, then you put the content on that's relevant to them. And when that content is relevant to them, they engage with it. And when they engage with it, it's seen on their news feed. And this is, it, it, it's not rocket science and it's kind of just dawned on me over the last week with all this research, is how bad we can screw up um, social media simply because we screw it up because we're not talking to our customer. We have to understand who our customer is, the message that we're putting, the, 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 the content that we're putting on our Facebook pages or even on our Instagram pages has to relate to them, has to help them solve their problems, has to show that we ha- empathise with them, we understand where they're coming from. It has to um, encourage them to do a solution that we've now got, not asking for the sale, but encourage the solution. So, g'day Hillary, how are you? I will see you, yes, next week. I can't wait to be there on uh, Wednesday all the way through to Sunday, so it's going to be a big week next week in New Zealand. So I guess this is a really important component of just social media, is... You know, people talk about content being king. I'm actually saying it's quality content is king. Quality content is king. And we've got to get that right, ladies and gentlemen. And that quality content must relate directly to who our customer is. Wow, a bit of everything in this week's show. So, um, you know, there were those seven tips from uh, George Foreman III on leadership. I uh, hope you got some value out of them. There are a couple there that I think as I went through them were my favourites. Um, then I talked about making buying easier for our customer. And finally, I talked about understanding your customer better so that what you post on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, wherever you're playing, talks to them. Talks to them and they then engage so that they then continue to see your social media feeds. Simple as that. So... That's about it for show 71. Uh, In about half an hour, I'm going to get on a flight and head back to Australia. So um, I'm going to get a good night's sleep, I hope, and uh, look forward to spending the day with the family tomorrow. Uh, Next week, uh, Monday, Tuesday, I've got an industry leaders round table uh, up at Newcastle with my uh, Anytime Fitness franchisees. And then uh, on Wednesday, I fly to New Zealand, and I'll be in New Zealand for FitEx on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Next week's the official launch of the New Zealand Industry Leaders Roundtable. So if you're a club owner over there in New Zealand, get ready. We're going to be launching over there next Friday uh, at the Business Summit. So pretty excited about that. Uh, We're looking for 12 independent club owners or um, fitness studio owners to join that roundtable. So I'm going to finish off with quote of the week. Now, quote of the week actually came from George Foreman III. He talked about um, Angelo Dundee. Angelo Dundee was uh, Muhammad Ali's trainer. Uh, I think he said he also trained um, Foreman, and he may have trained someone else. But he's pretty much regarded as the world's best boxing trainer. Um, He's passed away now. He passed away in uh, 2012. Uh, But this was his quote. Because what, um, what George Foreman III asked Angelo Dundee, he said, how do, you, you know, how do you get a fighter ready to fight? Like, how do you get them in the, in the modality of ready to get into that ring and, and win a fight? How do you come up with the game plan? What do you do as the trainer? And he said this, how's this for just pure gold? It's not a good idea unless it comes from the fighter. It's not a good idea unless it comes from the fighter. What a great quote for us to finish on. Um, So I really want you to ponder that and think about how that might be relevant in your business. It's not a good idea unless it comes from the fighter. Whether you're dealing with a client or you're dealing with team members. One more time. 
it's not a good idea unless it comes unless it comes from the fighter. Hey, thanks for tuning in to JT and the Raw. Show 71, coming to you from LAX Airport. Heading home, I'm going to catch you guys next week. I'll be coming to you live from Auckland. So can't wait to hit talk to you guys there. Catch ya.